Hey what's up everyone, James here and today we are going to discuss what happened to Percy Harvin and why he never really even had a chance. Guys, make sure to like the video, comment down below, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell, it helps out my channel a lot. Percy Harvin was born in Chesapeake, Virginia, where he lived with his mother and his older sister as his father left him at an early age. Not only did his mother raise her children alone, she even ran a daycare out of their house where Harvin himself also helped to take care of the children. As a six-year-old Pop Warner player, Harvin's coach said he was an incredible athlete with amazing speed that could make it to the next level. Yes, as a six-year-old. At the age of 13, he even played for coach Bruce Pearl and the Virginia Beach Mustangs Pop Warner football team, leading them to a national championship. So through his whole life and at an early age, he showed that he was an amazing athlete that could lead his team to success. However, Percy Harvin also grew up with an anxiety disorder and migraines since the age of 7. As you're going to see, this is something that unfortunately never went away. Percy played high school football for the Lansdowne High School Eagles. As a freshman in high school, Percy Harvin had a 4-3-2 40-yard dash time. So as a true freshman, he was one of the fastest football players in the entire country. Now, as a junior and senior in high school, Harvin was already showing his dual threat abilities, being able to do everything on the football field. As he rushed for 1,052 yards and caught 2,252 more yards and had 49 total touchdowns as a junior and senior. He even helped lead his team to two state championship games, winning one as a junior. This led to Percy Harvin being ranked as the number two wide receiver in the nation as a five-star recruit for the 2006 class. Now, he considered many Florida schools like the Miami Hurricane, the Florida State Seminoles, but he decided on the University of Florida to play for the Gators and Urban Meyer. As a true freshman, he had both 400 yards receiving and rushing with five total touchdowns. A promising start to his career and he showed off his speed and abilities. Now, as a sophomore, he upped this to 760 yards rushing and 850 receiving with 10 total touchdowns. He was putting up great numbers for a good football team. However, in his junior year, he rushed for 660 yards, received 664 yards, and had a crazy 17 total touchdowns. His production helped lead the Florida Gators to the 2008 College Football Championship against the Oklahoma Sooners, where he had 171 total yards and one touchdown, all while playing on an injured ankle against the Sooners. So yes, he won a national championship and Pop Warner at 13, he won a state championship in high school, and then he won a national championship in college as a junior. Percy Harvin just knew how to win and be a part of a winning culture. He finished his career with Florida with 3,781 all-purpose yards and 32 total touchdowns, showing off his amazing speed and playmaking ability. This production shot him up draft boards where every single scout couldn't get over his speed and electricity. It's reported that some scouts even considered him a possible top 10 pick in the draft. But unfortunately, in February of that year, before the draft, he actually tested positive for marijuana, which reportedly caused some teams to take him off their draft boards. Still, he ran for an insane 4-4-1 in the combine in his 40-yard time, and the Minnesota Vikings took a chance on him with the 22nd overall pick in the first round of the 2009 NFL Draft. Now this leads us into his NFL career where he started 8 out of 15 games as a rookie, catching 790 yards and rushing for 135 more yards and 6 total touchdowns. He would then add on 1,156 more yards and two more touchdowns on kickoff returns. He was then selected to the Pro Bowl as a returner in just his rookie season. He was then also announced as the Associated Press Offensive Rookie of the Year. The Vikings even made it to the NFC Championship game, but they fell 31-28 to the New Orleans Saints. So he started his career off with a bang and showed everyone why he was a first round pick. Now heading into his second season, he again excelled with 868 yards receiving and 107 yards rushing for 6 touchdowns. He also added another 933 yards on kickoff returns with one more touchdown. Despite his amazing production, Percy Harvin's migraines that have been affecting him his whole life 
were really starting to bother him and affect him in the NFL. In August of 2010, he suffered a migraine attack so bad that he passed out at practice and was even taken to the hospital on an ambulance. Later on that season, he missed a game in week 14 due to migraines. Despite this, he continued to push through and play and assured everyone that he would be okay. Now in his third season, he had his best year of his entire career with 967 yards receiving on 87 receptions for 6 touchdowns. He also had 345 yards rushing with 2 more touchdowns and 520 return yards and 1 more touchdown, averaging a crazy 32.5 yards per return. Harvin was also active in all 16 games for the first time in his short career. Despite his migraine issues, things were starting to look pretty good. However, this would be the last quote unquote highlight of his career as in his fourth season, he only played in nine games before being placed on injured reserve, ending his season on December 6, 2012. He ended the season with 1,347 total yards and five total touchdowns. Not everyone knew it at the time, but this would be the beginning of the end for his career and the start to numerous injuries and problems. This leads us to 2013, where even though the Vikings said they were not looking to trade Percy Harvin, they ended up trading him to the Seattle Seahawks for three picks, including a first round draft pick. He was also signed to a six year, $67 million mega contract with 25 million guaranteed. But you're probably asking, why was he traded? Well, apparently he had many rifts and disagreements with both the staff and the higher ups in the organization. He also really didn't like Vikings quarterback Christian Ponder, which is understandable since he wasn't that great, and he kept getting into it with his head coach, Leslie Frazier. Now these were public altercations, things that everybody could see in the locker room and on the field. There were some players who also said he was horrible in the locker room with being too moody, having temperamental mood swings, and just not being a good teammate. However, despite this, Percy Harvin decided that he would have a fresh start and he was excited to play for Pete Carroll and quarterback Russell Wilson for the Seahawks. However, he suffered a labrum tear in his hip and had to have hip surgery, so he was only able to play in one game catching one pass for 17 yards before having to repair his hip again. So in his entire regular season with his new contract, he played in one game and had one catch. Not such a great start. But fortunately for him, he would make it back at the very end of the season in the playoffs in the Super Bowl. In the Super Bowl, the Seattle Seahawks held a 22-0 lead against the Denver Broncos at halftime. Now everyone who watches sports know you have your pep talks at halftime, you have your motivational speeches, let's get back to it, let's get a comeback in this game. However, Percy Harvin had other ideas as he returned the second half kickoff for an 87 yard touchdown erasing any chance the Denver Broncos had. This gave them a 29-0 lead. After this, they wouldn't look back and the Seattle Seahawks won their first Super Bowl championship. So he was only able to play in one game and just in the Super Bowl, although he had a promising start. However, talks came up again about how Harvin was a bad teammate and a bad presence in the locker room. It was even said that he was much worse in Seattle than he ever was in Minnesota. Apparently, there were games that he would go sit down on the bench himself and refuse to go back into the game. Now for me personally, it's hard to get really mad at him because again, people who suffer from these migraine issues have to deal with a lot of pain and he's playing football where he's getting hit in the head constantly. He also struggled with finding the correct medicine and being able to get past this. In his career, he was never able to find the medicine that helped him play football and get over the pain. This led to him being traded to the New York Jets for a worthless draft pick and he ended the season with just 955 total yards and one touchdown. So he put up decent numbers, but unfortunately for Harvin, the team signed Brandon Marshall in the offseason and ended up letting him go. After he was released, he then signed a one-year contract with the Buffalo Bills. He played in just five games, putting up just 357 yards and one touchdown before being placed on injured reserve in November due to a knee injury. Due to this and horrible migraine issues that again he could not get under control and the multiple career injuries, he retired in April of 2016. Now he did come out of retirement later that year to play two games to help the Buffalo Bills because they had so many receiver injuries. But after this season, he retired for real and that's where we are now guys. So what happened? He had such a promising career looking like one of the most explosive and exciting players in the whole league. In his first few seasons, he was electrifying and he was one of the most exciting players to watch. But his injuries started to add up and as he stated himself, 
the migraines were uncontrollable and I just couldn't handle the pain anymore. So despite everything he could do, all the doctors, he couldn't find the right medicine, he couldn't get it under control, and it was just impossible to play in the NFL getting hit hard every week while having these migraine issues. And I don't know about you guys, but I definitely couldn't be getting hit in the head all the time when I'm already having severe migraines. He was robbed from a long, amazing NFL career, but you have to give him props for making it so far. Don't forget, he suffered from this since the age of 6 or 7, and despite this, he won a championship in Pop Warner in high school in college and the NFL. Not a lot of players can say that they won all of those. He was so electrifying to watch and every time he touched the football, you were excited to see what he would do. It's a sad case of injuries and health destroying a player's career. I don't really blame him too much for his locker room issues as medical issues are hard to diagnose properly and he could never find the right medicine that made it bearable to play football. Guys, Percy Harvin was so amazing and it's sad to see how his career turned out, but let me know what you guys think in the comments down below, what was the main factor that ended his career, and did you enjoy watching him play? As always guys, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell to stay up to date with all my videos. As always guys, I'll see you in the next one.